Anthony Hartwig with a Columbiana softball player profile. We are joined by one of their absolute superstars, of course, Caitlin Pleska. Caitlin, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having me. As you can see, top right hand corner of the screen, this interview brought to you by Baird Brothers, and there's no other way, no other sponsor you could pick for the Baird Brothers Big Dog of the Week uh, this week. Caitlin, first question for you. Obviously, a lot of people went out and voted for that. There were a lot of big names on that list. Um, what's it mean to you that your community, your fans, the people that, that are supporting you got out there and voted you as Baird Brothers Big Dog of the Valley? I'm not going to lie. Kind of surprised that I won, but I'm very happy that I won. And I appreciate everybody that went out and voted for me. I was facing a lot of the top dogs in our area. Sydney Watts, who's committed. She's so good. And Melana Toast, she's also a very good pitcher. So I knew it was going to be a tough run, but I am very proud of myself and very happy. I've worked so hard to get to where I am right now. And I just thank everybody who voted for me. It's a big honor. When the reality is in your face, you have that many supporters to beat the people like the names that you just mentioned. And obviously they have plenty of supporters in their corner. What's that mean to you to realize that you have so many people on your on your back and so many people that are right there behind you, giving you all the support and, and momentum you could ask for? Um, it really helps me continue to drive and do better every day in practice. It gives me the motivation to continue to do better because I want to make my supporters proud and continue to just do what I do and be who I am and get better every day for them and for me. You know, your name has been in the limelight long enough that some people might feel like you're a senior, but you're not yet. You're just going into your upperclassman year as the class of 25. What's it been like, you know, being a staple in this program for so long and now having being able to be saying, hey, I'm an upperclassman now, a little bit more leadership on my shoulders, a little bit more responsibility. What's that been like for you? Um, I mean, now that I'm an upperclassman, I do have some people looking up to me. So I know that I have to do the best of my ability to help them and be a good leader and person that they can look up to and help them. And I just think that it's really great because I have all these lower classmen that I can help and motivate them to be the best they can be. You know, and experience wise, you're also kind of, you know, you're a de facto senior too, because you have, you know, so much varsity experience and high travel ball experience. How much do you use that to guide the rest of your team and some of the younger players say, hey, you know, there's not a situation in softball that I probably haven't been through. So when we're going through this, whatever it may be, here's what I got. Here's how I got through when I've been through it in the past. Um, So travel has helped me like tremendously in my softball career because you are playing those high level girls you know that they're the best of the best and you are always in those situations because you play a lot of games in the summer and you play a lot in like winter and fall so you're playing all year so you get in every single situation you could ever think of so you know how to prepare for them and you know how to play them and for those younger girls that might not have been in those situations it's good because I can help explain them to them and help with what they're supposed to be doing in their positions. I feel like there's not much that you can't do on the softball field. I mean, you field well, you pitch, you, you hit obviously a monster batting average in, in production. What got you into being such a versatile player and being able to do all these different things? Um, so for travel, I pitch and I play corners, but for high school, I am the starting shortstop. And, you know, I never really thought of myself as a shortstop, but it's the best way that I can help my high school team. So I'm very flexible and I do my best work and play shortstop to the best of my ability to help them. So, you know, you kind of just got to do what's best for your team, even though if it's not one of your like main positions that you've worked on, you just have to be able to consider that it's where your team needs you best. So you just have to do what they need. With these different roles, you're switching mindsets a lot. You're going from a fielder's mindset to a pitcher's mindset to a hitter's mindset. How are you able to, you know, switch it off and turn into a hitter and turn into a fielder and then turn into a pitcher? Um, so I think pitching helps like a lot of that because as a batter, you're not just thinking about the batting standpoint, but you're thinking about the pitching standpoint from like their pitcher, you know how they might think because you know how you pitch and what you think when you're pitching to batters. So it's nice to have that perspective while you're hitting. And then 
and the field, that's just kind of a different thing. But you field when you're pitching to every occasion. Mm -hmm. But being able to field, that's what I – I've been fielding longer than I've been pitching, so it comes more natural. And, again, that's one thing that you always work on. I work on fielding, pitching, and batting all the time. So being working on all three of those things, it's just kind of an instinct at that point. Obviously, you enjoy all three because you put work in all three of those aspects of the game. But where do you feel like you're in your element? Is it in the field? Is it at the plate? Or is it in the circle? Um, I really am confident with myself at the plate. It shows in my stats if that's the truth. But I really feel confident at the plate because I trust my bat. And in the plate, you really can't take the time to think about it. You just have to react in the field, you can take time to think, and when you're pitching, you can get in your own head. But when you're at the plate, it's just go. You have to trust what you do, and that's just – that's where I feel comfortable. But I feel comfortable everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of high school teams, if they have a dominant pitcher, she's usually the one that that, that is writing all the stats and putting all of, them, all of it on their shoulders. But Columbiana, you got Mackenzie Gamble right behind you, always having your back, the one-two punch, and you have – other pitchers that have come in this season as well. What's it like to have kind of a staff and to be able to not have to go every day or not have to have the pressure of if I don't have my A game, we might not win. What's that been like for you? Um, So it's very useful having multiple pitchers that can do good at a varsity level. Mackenzie has the speed and she has movement and she does really good against high class teams. And then I'm back to back her up with, I don't throw as fast as her, but I have my spins that I think work really well. I don't strike people out, but I get them to hit the ball into the ground or pop fly. And then we have Marin, who's also another change of speed. So it really works. The three of us, we have fast and then like middle and another change of speed there. So it's a really good um, lineup, I should say, because we're not all the same. So if we're both, if Mackenzie pitches and I pitch, it's, changing the batter's view and the pitching. We know that when you have pitchers on the team, you go up against each other in practice. You got to see live pitching. What's it like trying to hit against McKenzie? And then what's it like trying to pitch to her too? Um, So pitching to her is always fun because I, she's a really good hitter. So I really have to think of the pitches I want to throw to her and hitting off her again. I have faced higher level pitching like her and travel. So you know, again, you just got to go and trust your bat and hit. I feel like with McKenzie, it's you got to sit on the heat. You know, you got to yeah. get on that heat or you're not going to you're not going to survive uh, yeah. against McKenzie Gamble. Um, I want to ask you about your, you, just the experience in softball, when you got started, when this journey started and when you started to fall in love with the sport. I have fallen in love with the sport since I started playing when I was four. I started playing travel when I was seven. So that's really when it upped my love for the game because I was at it all the time. I did still play basketball and that was like a secondary sport, but softball was always what I loved. And I spent all my time on with pitching lessons and hitting lessons. I was just constantly like all year round doing the same sport. And I just found it as somewhere where I can go and just have fun and love my life a little bit. Obviously, you know, when you look at uh, the whole span of, of your softball career, was there a point when you went from, it was really fun and you enjoy it to this is something I really want to like spend time on and try to get into the next level and, and really work at this sport because it's something that I can do, you know, at, at a high level. Um, so I've always really had the love for the sport, and once I got a little bit older, I really started to want to play it at the next level. And my brother, he plays college baseball, and he really enjoys it. So that just makes me want to play even more because I know someone who enjoys it. And I believe I can play at the next level, which really helps me, and it pushes me even harder because I want to be able to get there. You know, you're in, you're at a junior, so you've gone through plenty of the recruitment process. I'm sure you've sent out hundreds and hundreds of emails to different coaches with, with every video, with every highlight. What kind of things are you looking for? What kind of programs, you know, are the ones that you think could be the ones that, that you know, catch your eye? What things could they offer to, to bring you on to the college? Um, so 
I personally think of academics for first because that's what's going to continue my life. That's what's going to make me money so I can, you know, have a good life in the future. But for the softball standpoint, I honestly, I just want to play. I just want to be able to play because that's just what I love. I want to be able to play and enjoy the game still. And I really haven't, I mean, I've been thinking about it a lot, but Right now, I'm focusing on the high school season, so I'm going to do more with it once the high school season's over. If I put this hypothetical scenario in front of you, tell me which team that you would like rather, like what personality or what team you'd rather be on. Well, let's say you go to one school that maybe you wouldn't play right away, but it's a championship caliber you know, school. They're, they're winning a lot, got a lot of great players to learn from and build off of, and you would really have to you know, fight for your spot and earn it. Or then there's the other teams that you go to – Maybe their program is in a little bit of a struggle spot. They're looking for people to come in and make an immediate impact to really build, you know, uh, stepping stones of a, of a successful program. Which one can, would you rather do? Would you rather kind of go and learn from people that are already established and are, are winning and try to get to try to get your way into that, or do you want to go to a school where you could make an immediate impact and and obviously you know help them with the building blocks of a program? <laughs> Um, So I love being able to make an impact, but personally, I like being around a lot of top caliber girls, Mm -hmm. which will push me to be even better and be around all of them. And I like a little bit of competition to be able to work my way up into hopefully a starting or playing spot in the team. You talked about your brother playing college baseball, but then obviously one of your coaches also played college softball. Madison Kurtz played uh, for four years in college softball. What's it been like to have a coach that you can pick her brain and be like, hey, what what were you what did you go through in your recruitment process and what were your coaches looking for? What's that been like? Uh, so I think it's very useful because she has been able to help me through some tough spots and very relate to what I'm going through. So it's very helpful that she can just help me through this whole process and give me her personal problems and how she did it to give me the advice to continue. Obviously you have the husband and coach, a husband and wife coach set up at Columbia. And I call them the Ralph and Karen weeklies of, of high school softball. What's it been like to, to watch their dynamic and to be able to be coached by both of them and, and how much have they helped you grow in your, in your softball career? Well, since they are husband and wife, they do have, they work very well together. So it's very nice having that specific relationship between our coaches so that they don't really butt heads as much, but they work off of each other and strive to get what's best for all of us. It's very nice. And yeah. If you had to pick like one aspect of your game that you think those two are the most responsible for getting you to where you're at, what part of the game do you think you'd, you'd say? Um, Honestly, Maybe the mental part of my game, because I used to struggle with that a lot. But Coach Maddie Kurtz has really helped me through that because she also experienced that in her high school days. So she has been able to really encourage me to do better on that aspect. You get to represent Columbiana every day. What's your favorite part about being able to represent the school, being able to represent the, the community, and to be able to call yourself a Clipper? Um, our community is all really close. So... I really love being to represent this little family that we have in Columbiana. It's always a joy being able to be in the community and just everyone being so close together. It's really nice. Let's talk about softball superstitions. Do you have any of them? Do you have any things that, that, you know, you have to keep in routine? Um, Well, I always put my uniform on in the same order. And let's see, what else do I have? I always have like some type of braid in my hair normally, whether it be like a little small one or a big one. And left cleat always goes on before right cleat. Left cleat, right cleat. Okay. Um, Is it left sock, right sock too? Yes, always, always. (laughs) Can't forget Uh, that. You guys have some awesome uniforms and you've had awesome uniforms your whole career. What's your favorite, you know, uniform combo? What, What makes you look good, feel good, play good? Um, So we always do the white jerseys with the black socks for home games and the red jerseys with the red socks for away games. I personally like the red jerseys better because I can roll my sleeves up. The white jersey, my one sleeve, 
can stretch a little bit, but the other the other sleeve is attached to my bicep and it will not even go up at all. So that really bothers me because so it's you'll be, like you'll be sitting there with one sleeve up, one sleeve not. What's the, what's you doing that. out there? <laughs> no, I I did that last year. It just looked so bad and it would give me bad tan lines. So I just we play it with the sleeves down on the white jersey. <laughs> All right, this is something we're asking every softball player this year. We're keeping a tally. Uh, what's your softball ick? What are some things that you see in the softball world that just give you that cringe feeling? Neavage. All right, that's in the lead now. You've given it a three. It was tied with uh, visors being over the ears, but uh, you just gave Neavage the lead. Neavage, so bad. I can't stand it. <laughs> Um, when you think of favorite off the field memories with this team, uh, what, what, what comes to mind? Um, I would say probably going to get food after games. We get canes a lot. <laughs> we'll drive up to Boardman and we'll get canes or like Chipotle. And we just have, we always have like girls coming and we all, some of us will drive together and it's just, it's a good time and some bonding. Best way to celebrate a big win for Caitlin Pluska. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes we'll go out for ice cream or – I don't know. I don't really – I feel like I don't celebrate that much, which is kind of – You just recently had a walk-off victory on over the weekend. How did you celebrate that one? Did you not do anything? I went to work. <laughs> well, there you go. That's how okay you celebrate. I, I went – I left the game. I left the West Branch game, and I went straight to work. She, she earns that money. Yeah. That's how we celebrate things. I do want to ask, you know, you talked about obviously uh, academics first. Before we let you go, I got to remember, what career path are you thinking about? Or have you thought about what majors you want and what career path you want to get into? So I have been thinking of going into majoring in psychology and minoring in criminology for a little bit. So that's what I've, that's what my career path has been for a while. Uh, It could change always, but that's what it's been for the quite a while now what what got you interested in that um I just I want to be able to help people I've been through a lot myself so I can relate to them and my dad has put in my head that AI is going to replace a lot of jobs so (laughs) he's told me that I need to think of a job that won't be replaced by AI so that's also part of it but the fact of helping people just really (laughs) it sparks my robots are taking over the world (laughs) yeah Um, Caitlin, one of the things we also do with these player profiles is we give the player the chance to take the limelight off themselves for a minute and shine on their support system, the people that have had their backs throughout their career. So I want to do that for you. I want to give you the time to thank the people in your life, whoever you need to thank. uh, You have as much time as you want to do it. Okay. So I want to thank my dad for always being the ones to take me to my lessons, take me down to the field to hit by myself or hit me ground balls. He's always been the one. He also catches my pitching lessons. My mom would be the one to take me to all of my travel tournaments, so I wouldn't have been able to play travel if she didn't do that. My brother, he will. He always pushed me because we would always have that sibling rivalry where – one, we would want to do better than each other. So that was always helpful. And he also talked to me whenever I need help. And to all my teammates on high school, they've always pushed me and been a great team. My travel teammates, I love because we're such a close group, which makes softball so much more fun just to be around all of my close friends. And they also push me and want me to do my best. My travel coach, head coach, Coach Gott, he always, he also always pushes me to do my best and he'll let me come to our building and hit and pitch whenever I really want when there's no one in there. And he's always been <laughs> congratulating me. He'll text me right after my games and congratulate me on how I did. So that's really just, that makes me feel really good. And yeah, that's a lot of who I really appreciate in my softball journey. All right, Caitlin, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it, and we wish you the best of luck the rest of this year. We can't wait to talk to you again real, real soon. Thank you so much.